Yes, everyone, welcome back to the Irish Hotspur and welcome back Kulisevsky Army because we're going to be talking about him again because we were on Friday chatting about Dominic Solanke and that transfer rumor. And Dave, as we know, had some doubts over the Solanke rumor. I complimented him for being more balanced than I expected about the Solanke rumor. But he did mention, right, that Kulisevsky has been playing pretty well during this preseason. He's been playing down the middle practically as a striker in most situations and has looked pretty good so far. He's had good hold-up play. He's been involved in the majority of the goals thus far. And I think Dave has even touted him as being a long-term solution for the striker role at Tottenham Hotspur. So might as well pass it off to him here. If you can for us, smash the like button. Do get in the comments below as well what your thoughts are on Kulisevsky thus far this preseason. Do you think he is good enough to play down the middle as a Spurs striker? But Dave, Kulisevsky, I mean, what do you think? How has he performed for you in the preseason? And can he actually realistically be a viable long-term solution for Tottenham? Look, first of all, I think he's been amazing this preseason. I would say bar any of the youngsters who have grabbed all the headlines. I think he's been our most consistent player in terms of pre-season. And can he be a viable long-term option? Well, look, I'm going to lay out my plan on why I think he could. And then I want you guys to give me your feedback. First of all, I do want to say, obviously, I'd rather an Ivan Tony or someone like a Victor Gorkarez coming in here. So I may get that out of the way first because many people are going, just buy a striker. I get it. I would. However, if we're in the rounds, if we're paying $68 million for someone like Dominic Solanke, I feel like we should use what we've already got at the club. So I'm going to put my case forward. Why I think Dejan Kulazeski could be the long-term solution rather than shelling out a 68 million on someone like Dominic Solanke. First of all, I think Kulazeski has shown that he can adapt. Archie Gray and Jamie Donnelly, rightly so, have got massive praise for being a playing out of position and showing they can adapt. But Kulazeski has shown uh, since his arrival at Tottenham Hotspur, he can adapt to multiple positions out on the right. He, you presume he could play out on the left or be even more better out on the left being left footed. You know, he can play as a cam, can play as a number eight, but also he's demonstrated that he can play up front, which for me, when I see a player that's competent in multiple positions, it shows off how good of a football and IQ he has, how much of an understanding of the game he has and what's required of him in these positions. Now, the next thing I would say, Jack, is anytime we've seen Kulazeski up front, I'd argue it's where he's looked most impressive and where he's been most consistent. You go back to the Luton game last season, Tottenham were down to 10 men for all of our dominance and the chances we created. We were only 1-0 up. We had uh, we had no other option. We had to go. We got a man sent off. We had to go with Kulazeski up front, asking him to play out of position. He carried that front line absolutely magnificently that day, even better than what some strikers would with a club down to 10 men. When you look at him against Sheffield United, end of the season, played up front, bagged two goals, very similar to the way Harry Kane used to bag his goals at Tottenham, holding off a player and finding the bottom of the corner. Absolutely brilliant. And the other day in pre-season, played up front, and it's the best our first half front line has looked all pre-season with him up front. So I'd argue that's where he's been most impressive in a Tottenham shirt. When I look at his physique, Jack, his body shape, it's suited to being a striker. He's a big, strong, powerful lad who can hold people off. You know, he's got good techers, with good ball control with his feet. For me, I think it's absolutely suited to a striker role or a cam role, somewhere very in the middle, close to closer to goals, I would argue. But also... The understanding that this guy has of what is required of him in this in this position as a striker, it's really, really good, I would argue. You know, he's linking up play, especially with the likes of Son, which I think is very important. I think most important because he's our best forward player and it's just natural. You build your forward line around your best forward player and who complements him the most. From what I've seen so far this preseason, that's been Kulazeski when he's played as a striker, which puts Son... <clears throat> most importantly, back out on the left-hand side, which I've always argued is his best position and where he's most effective. And we've seen that again this preseason. And I do think Kulazeski makes decent runs, although I would argue that is one area where I think he could improve, is maybe make more intelligent runs, but that will come the longer he plays in that in that striker role, Jack. Um, but also... I think, personally, and you'll probably agree with this, Jack, because I know one of your big frustrations last season with Dejan Kulazeski was when he was bearing down on goal and had a lot of time to think about it, he was often wasteful. Whereas I'd argue when he's up front and he's less time to think about, I actually think he's a lot more clinical. Um, and then lastly, 
out or not sorry not lastly two more points out of possession he works his nuts off which we know is very important in Ange Postecoglou's system he'll run all day long without giving up which I think is a huge benefit and something top modern day strikers feel like they don't have to do or they can get away with that they don't have to do that work and then lastly Kulisewski's 22 23 that's about the age where Harry Kane first broke into the Tottenham team nobody gave Harry Kane a hope in hell finishing Tottenham's uh, record goal scorer, stuff like that. But, you know, he had all the attributes and he just needed a chance. He just needed a manager that believed in him. Once that happened, look what he went on to do for the football club. With everything I've said, I'd argue, I think Kulazeski, uh, his body shape, sometimes the way he plays, I think is very much a likeness to Harry Kane. And I just think if someone inside the club sees what I see, I think they could make a very, very good striker out of Dejan Kulazeski and could potentially be our long-term solution. I like a lot of those points there, Dave. Um, I'm going to steal a, a word that I think Sam used on our debate show or our panel show the other night. Kulisevsky is a bit of a battering ram, I think, of a player where he really doesn't shy away from the physicality of the game. He's happy to carry it through congested areas, take hits, you know, take bumps and still end up, you know, emerging with the ball. And that's a key attribute if you are going to be a striker, yeah. I think, in this system, right? It's it's definitely hold up play related with Ange Ball, but it's also, I think, as a striker, you do need to have that ability to handle, you know, possession in congested areas where you're just surrounded by defenders. And Kulusevsky yeah. does really well, actually, in those situations. In fact, I'd say he actually does better with the physical physicality in sort of the central areas than he actually does in the wide areas. One of my big frustrations with Kulusevsky in the past has even been sometimes he struggles to go down when he has been fouled, when he has been pushed, when he has been, uh, you know, definitely pushed around. And because he, he really enjoys, I think, kind of the physical play. And if you're going to be that sort of guy, you might actually be better suited than as a striker because the striker, you're not going to get that sort of call usually from the referee. You are going to get you know, pushed around, you are going to have to have those sort of physical battles with your defenders. And he seems to really enjoy it, if not thrive with it. And I wonder if that's actually part of his game, right? Where yes, he can do a job out there on the right, but when he comes up against these smaller fullbacks that are kind of quick, very agile, that kind of, you know, nip at him and sort of push him, he seemed mm -hmm. to kind of struggle with that at times because he could try to physically get past them. But then if he didn't, you know, he wouldn't take the foul when they would try to trip him up or anything like that. And so he maybe is just better suited for the physical style and the physical play of uh, playing centrally and playing as a striker. Mm -hmm. You mentioned this before, but. He works super well and super hard under pressure and also presses really hard uh, for the team out of possession. And that's also a key attribute of this system is that as the striker, you need to be leading the press. You need to be the guy that's always telling players, you know, to start triggering, you know, the moments to try to win the ball back high up the pitch. And Kulusevsky, along with Sonny and Richarlison, maybe are the hardest working frontline players that we have in this team. So I don't think he would struggle at all dealing with kind of the physicality of also having to press and move about the pitch. And what I like about his holdup play is that compared to maybe your traditional big large man type striker, Kulusevsky actually can get turned when he is holding up the ball with his back yeah. to goal compared to other players. A lot of wingers, you know, in the modern day, they have to drop really deep or they have to really hug the wide areas so that when they do receive the ball, they can actually face their man, they can face mm -hmm. their defender, and then that's when they become dangerous. Whereas with Kulusevsky, it's kind of a bit of the opposite, where he did really well when he actually could pin a defender and actually hold the ball up with his back to goal. And then from there, he uses just incredible trickery and also that just sort of bit of flair to then get past his man, usually likes to sort of shoulder them off and then kind of leave them behind him and ends up, you know, doing that really good ability, kind of similar to a striker of just then mm -hmm. not allowing his defender to get in front of him to try to catch up to him. And again, that's very similar kind of hold up play and creative play that you would want from your striker. And then finally, once he does get turned and once he does have that sort of a moment, you know, in the central area, he has that eye for a pass of, you know, a number 10 yeah. or a creative player, similar to that of a Harry Kane. I don't think he has the same passing range that Kane does, but what Kane had was a number 10 like eye for a pass where he yeah. sees the run. And I think Kulusevsky is similar where he sees a run, you know, between the lines, mm -hmm. he will play it through the defender's legs or he will go for a little chip, you know, over the top or something like that. And I think that is 
a really you know interesting attribute that you don't see nowadays all the time with your traditional strikers mm -hmm. and another thing too is that he is left-footed and that can be dangerous you know a left-footed player mm -hmm. as a striker lots of times i think defenders do expect that the guy will take it on to his right they'll have to do that bit of studying on him where he's a very left-footed player and i wonder if he can mm -hmm. punish some guys for that where he ends up you know kind of twisting them taking them one way but then can cut back on that left foot which can be really dangerous and a good attribute to have. Mm -hmm. And two more final points for me here on this one, Dave, is that he did mention that la last season that, of course, he likes and prefers to play centrally. So here's his opportunity to do so. But he then mentioned, remember that great header that he had from last season where he absolutely towered over that guy yeah, at see. the back post. Remember, he had that sort of moment where he didn't compliment himself. He actually said, I wish I had more opportunities to do that. In fact, I mm -hmm. wish I was doing that more often as a player, which again highlights he has no problem with the physical side of the game. He actually mm. wants to try to improve that area of his game, which is winning headers, rising above defenders, just dealing with that sort of physical type workload of being a striker and being a central player. So I found that kind of interesting that he even mentioned that last season, that that's an area mm. he wants to improve on. And that would be great for us if he played down the middle. And my final, final point is that him and Sonny, I think for ever since he's came to the club, have always had a pretty decent relationship with each other. They seem to know and understand each other's movements. They've been combining really well in this preseason. But if you take mm -hmm. yourself back to the Antonio Conte days, I think Kulusevsky combined well with Kane. I'd almost argue he combined even better with someone like Sonny because they sort of are such different players that Sonny makes those runs beyond the defense. Kulusevsky can play him in behind. They sort of have this type of relationship with each other where they just, like I said, understand each other's games and maybe each other's weaknesses. And uh, I think that could be, again, a really good thing to have is have Sonny being played out on the left, but then have someone play centrally who already knows Sonny's game, who already knows how to play with him and uh, work off of him. So with Kulusevsky, there's a lot of things to work with when it comes to him as a striker. 100% agree with it with everything you've said there and to maybe summarize it for, look there's two sort of strikers right one striker that wants to evade his man drop deep or get in behind and evade all physical contact whatsoever and give himself that space to be able to run at his man and do him or there's there are other type of four that prefer to be touch tight to their man and back their strength to be able to hold them off and create that space in half a yard they need because they don't have that pace. So they have to have something different about them. And for me, Kulaseski is that second type of player. And for me, what we've seen in Ange Ball last season, Richarlison up front compared to Sun up front, although Sun got more goals, Sun didn't have all the attributes we need. It's clear that Kulaseski type of forward is more suited to Ange Postecoglou's system and also helps elevate our best player in this system. So for me, I rest my case. Kulaseski army. Get in there. Back me up. <laughs> Kulusevsky Nation, please help out our man Dave. He's been your defender. He's been your interpreter. He's been your translator for the Kulusevsky ball, and he could be the perfect fit for this system related to the Solanke, you know, video that we put out earlier. Maybe Kulusevsky's an even better choice. But we'll leave you there, everybody. Come on, you Spurs. In the big end, we trust. We never stop. See you, everyone. Everywhere we go.